Uyghur American Nuri Turkel joins us now for his insights. He's an attorney and the vice chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Nuri, it's great to have you here with us. Thank you. As images from the labor camps... Thank you camps, very much for having me on. As images from the labor camps become more prominent, how has the conversation changed since the opening ceremony? The, um, the Chinese government, as well as the IOC, uh, underestimated the power of consumers. Uh, one great indication that we've seen, um, the, the significant drop in the viewership, as reported in the case of NBC, uh, we're talking about nearly 50% drop. So when the public, general public speaks out, uh, it matters. Uh, this is the way that you put pressure on corporate America, the businesses that have been complicit uh, in the ongoing genocide. And I can't imagine that this genocide Olympic would have taken place uh, if it was not for the support that the IOC received or CCP received from the corporate sponsors, namely Visa, Coca-Cola, Nike, Procter Gamble, uh, Omega. So, so these are the companies that have been uh, supporting uh, this genocide and previous, uh, excuse me, th these are the companies that have been supporting uh, this Olympics and previous Olympics. Let me just uh, mention something really quick about uh, the strange business practices of IOC, which is their uh, affinity, a strange affinity to uh, dictatorial uh, regimes, uh, authoritarian figures uh, throughout the history. Starting from 1936, we know what happened to uh, 6 million Jews and rest of the Europe um, after that Berlin Olympics. And we know what happened after the to Tokyo Olympics and then the Rome Olympics. And then fast forward in 2008, uh, those of us who advocate religious freedom and human rights around the world, and particularly in China, told the world that this is a wrong uh, occasion for glorifying this communist regime. Uh, and no one listened. And then uh, Sochi uh, games happened. Uh, during the 2008, Putin invaded Georgia. And shortly after the Sochi in 2012, uh, Putin invaded Crimea. And now we're in a very precarious uh, situation that this kind of games will not only encourage um, and normalize bad behaviors, bad actors, uh, uh, repressive regime, but also this kind of uh, fanfare will embolden them. And the diplomatic boycott was um, at least that uh, the international community, the free world, the uh, 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 Western societies, the governments could do. But we could have done better. We could have just removed this Olympic to another country, right. uh, relocate to another country that does not commit a genocide. And there's so much more to be done to protect the Uyghur Muslims and help secure their rights. Tell us a little bit more about what you've seen with these Genocide Olympics. Have there been attacks or censorship? I know some athletes were given instructions to avoid incensing the Chinese government. Was this necessary? You know, I, it's it's easy uh, for me to say I told you so, but it's not really helpful. Um, but we have cautioned uh, the United States government. We have... Uh, actually cautioned the athletes uh, that they need to have a really careful look at the, the circumstances. Because as we know now, now uh, the Chinese not only uh, told the athletes that they need to be mindful of potential consequences for their speaking out on politically sensitive, quote unquote, sensitive issues, our FBI, uh, the U.S. Uh, government, uh, alerted the athletes that they should not take their mobile devices to China. Uh, risking those devices to be hacked, uh, monitored. So that's the reality. And this is the um, this is the same country that um, developed and exported uh, a surveillance technology around the world. This is the regime trying to normalize religious persecution or committing genocide in a broad daylight was something normal. Uh, and and look look at uh, the responses, which is quite disappointing. Uh, only eight governments and parliaments in the Western liberal democracies have responded, at least fulfilled part of their treaty obligation under the Genocide Convention. So the Chinese have calculated carefully 
And they did expect there will not be an uh, international cry. They did expect that the business community continue to be in their pocket and doing the bidding of this communist regime. And they did also expect that some feckless leaders around the world who could be impactful will stay silent or show up just like the way that Antonio Guterres did uh, at the opening ceremony. Nuri, then what can we expect with the Olympics wrapping up? What happens next for advocacy for justice for the Uyghur community? Um, the status quo is untenable. Um, I call the international community, U.S. Congress, uh, to hold or put in place um, additional legal tools um, to hold um, uh, IOC and these corporate sponsors to account. Uh, this cannot happen again. Uh, this genocide Olympics actually could have been a good tool for uh, international community to pressure the Chinese to stop the genocide. The the opposite happened. A missed so opportunity. I, I, yeah, miss, it's a missed opportunity uh, because to the Chinese government, two things are uh, very important. One, their global image. The other is their economic interest. The U.S. government and bipartisan nature have been uh, responding to the Chinese uh, by hitting their economic interest with more than few, uh, 100 punitive sanctions, two pieces of legislation in the last two, three years. But without the cooperation from the business, business community, we will not be able to do this alone. Without the cooperation from our tr traditional allies and partners, we will not be able to handle this problem alone. So I think first thing first, we should uh, go after IOC, uh, specifically the uh, president of IOC, who is, it's just like, you know, getaway driver situation. Um, the Chinese, let's say the Chinese are bank, uh, committing bank, bank robbery and IOC uh, is, is in the driver's seat. So this should not let go. Uh, we need to we need to hold the IOC president and the organization itself and corporate sponsors to account. This is not America that we, you and I know. American companies does not uh, sponsor genocide and not supposed to gen sponsor genocide. So this is this is wrong on in all aspect, and, and we should not let this go. Uh, and we should hold them to account. And Nuri, you're holding them to account in your new book, No Escape. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I wrote a book uh, with the title No Escape because uh, even though I'm a free uh, person in the United States and I'm a proud U.S. citizen, and now I'm a U.S. official uh, and I'm a practicing lawyer, um, I have uh, the American dream uh, in, in many ways that I can be very happy and proud of. But at the same time, I'm not that free uh, because I, I um, as you know, that I've been sanctioned by the communist regime last December. Um, and I cannot go and visit my parents uh, or cannot get my parents out of China. But comparing to the others, my situation is less um, uh, uh, concerning because we know that our fellow Americans uh, have family members in the concentration camp. In order to illustrate that, that uh, tragic situation, I give my book a title, uh, No Escape, because none of us were able to escape from this communist regime, even though we are free people. Uh, including myself here in the United States and, uh, and, and some countries around the world, uh, free countries around the world. Well, Larry, so, um, we look forward to yeah. having you back to discuss your book and to tell us all about your story. Thank you so much.